Okay, I said I would make a tutorial, so here I am with a tutorial. I am going to show you how to sharpen a carpenter pencil for drawing with. Now the thing about carpenter pencils, and in case you're unaware, is that they are flat. The reason why they are flat is so that when you throw them on a table, they don't go anywhere. They don't slide out the edge like that would if it was near the edge of a table. Because of their shape, they also have a flat, long, lead core which, as their name suggests, they're for carpentry, they're for marking off wood. Since marking off wood is all in straight lines along a ruler, this is beneficial. You sharpen it into a wedge, and then you could slide it along uh, a ruler and get a line. Now this, naturally, the shape of the lead core, has some uses in art. You can do calligraphy type work with it, but because of its overall bulkiness and shape, it makes it difficult to use in that way. You could rotate your wrist as you work, but that gets very uncomfortable very quick. Ideally, you would want to be able to roll it in your fingers like a normal pencil, which the flat shape makes very difficult. It's doable, and with enough practice you can get good at that, but even with the practice, it's like there's a steep learning curve, like physically, that just you shouldn't waste your time with if there's a better solution. So, I'm here with that better solution. Now, I tried to shoot this video before and I hurt myself. And the reason I hurt myself is because the wood in this pencil is very soft and I was not expecting that. So you probably should either try and find a brand that has denser wood, um, which dense wood is always preferable in pencils. Dixon Ticonderogas have very dense wood and that is why I like them if I'm going to use a traditional pencil, which I generally don't do because I generally don't draw in pencil but I like to experiment and experimentation requires being open-minded. So what we're going to do is to make this more usable is we're going to use a pen gripper and we're going to quite simply put it over top of here. Now you can't do that as is. Uh, the reason being is it is much too wide and it is also too long. Even if you could fit this over here right now you really wouldn't be changing the shape of the pencil at all. We want to square this off, narrower, like right now it's a rectangle, we want it to be more of a square, and we need to make it thinner so that this will fit over top of it. Because you're going to need space for the actual tip, you want to go down much longer than the actual length of the gripper. So we're looking at this, and then you're going to want about that much exposed length. So really about twice the length of the gripper you're going to want to expose or not expose, you don't want to expose the core, you want to shape the outer casing around the core, the actual pencil wood. I'm not sure if there's a name for that, probably not. If there is, it's a really stupid thing to have a name for, just pencil wood is sufficient. And I am going off on a tangent, I apologize. So yeah, so we're going to go down, so we're going to want to mark off how much length we need. So since you're carving it with a carving it anyways, just mark it off with the razor blade. It's kind of ironic that we're marking off wood on a pencil used to mark off lines on wood. Damn, that's trippy. Um, okay, so now, just as I said, the wood is very soft, so you just want to be careful and be sure to cut away from yourself. While you're cutting away from yourself, try not to slice into the lead and take too much off of the wood because we're going to need the structural or structural integrity. And also you just don't want to go too thin with it because you don't want the pen, pen, the gripper to just slide on and off. You want it to be snug on there. At this point, I'm probably going to speed the video up. If I do, you might not hear me talk right now. If you could see the faces I'm making while doing this, you would be laughing. So that is what you don't want to do. You want to avoid doing that because it's, it, it's not a good time. It's not really the end of the world. The pencil will still work. It's just not pretty anymore. And who doesn't like pretty pencils? And who likes not pretty pencils? Okay, so now that we were able to fit this on, like, it's not a perfect circle. It's not going to, I mean, you can spend time working on it, or you could even use, like, sandpaper to perfectly smooth it down. 
if you're obsessive enough and like this kind of tool enough, you could sit down with like four or five different pencils and just all carve them down into shape and then put grippers on. Like, you may do that. You might really love this tool and that's kind of why I'm here to show it to you. Me, I enjoy using it like the times I've used it, which was really the first time I used it. But as I said before, I, I don't draw in pencil really. If I did, I would probably use this as my style of tool more often. But I don't draw in pen, I draw in pen because I prefer my mistakes to be intact. But yeah, so it's much more easy to roll in your fingers now. You can hold it at various angles more, much easier. So at this point, once you've exposed that, you just, once you've been able to put the gripper on the pencil, you just kind of want to sharpen it like you would normally. If you don't know how to sharpen with a razor blade, it's a very good skill to learn. Sharpening with a pencil sharpener is just sucks ass and is extremely limiting. I like working with bigger lead that you carve to a point and the reason is, is you can do a lot more with it. I've experimented with carving grooves into the tip of a pencil and you might think, well why would you do that? Well, parallel lines, faster cross hatching, think about it. These are things you can do. Right here, if you look at it, you have a lot of wide space. Like, it's the lead on the pencil is just, they see, you got a lot of width, you got a lot of, like, real estate to work with here. Like, if you wanted to, if you wanted this, like, I'm sure you've seen those videos where the guy's sitting there with an X-Acto knife carving, like, the Eiffel Tower into the tip of a pencil. Like, it is extremely carvable. It's an extremely malleable material and I'm not gonna say you need to sit down and start carving this into the Eiffel Tower. I mean if you do that, that's awesome go ahead and do it but like what you could very easily do would be carve three or four grooves into the tip of this and then once all you would have to do is just set it down and draw four lines perfectly parallel every time. You could cross hatch an entire drawing in seconds and have it be a much higher quality that would have otherwise taken you like maybe five minutes um, to get it that precise and it's just a, a thing you can do that's not what I'm gonna do today I'm just gonna sharpen it like you know a normal edge so that I can demonstrate what you're more likely gonna do so really you just want to expose the lead you don't want to like go too far down and you drill and you don't want to really sharpen it per se, at the moment, you just want to expose the, the lead, the graphite in the middle. Then once you've done that, then you decide, well, what do I want to do? Well, I want to turn autofocus back on so you can actually see what I'm doing. Then you decide what you want to do with it. For calligraphy type stuff, which is the example I gave, you just kind of want to put a wedge shape onto it. And this is how you do it. You just kind of work away at the lead little by little and this is really how you sharpen any pencil you just are doing it with a carpenter pencil right now alternately you could use sandpaper and just kind of quickly go at it and that'll give you a quick short edge or a quick edge and a lot of people that's how a lot of people like to sharpen their pencils because it's much faster to just strike at a piece of paper sitting on the side of the table than it is to uh, pull out a razor blade or pull out the sharpener. And now, you just kind of want to develop your own technique for sharpening. You can sharpen any way you want. You don't need to do one or the other. You can switch back and forth like I'm doing now. You can do whatever the fuck you want because you're the artist. And nobody tells the artist what, they, what to do. Except for art teachers because art teachers are assholes. I mean, they're also awesome, but you know what I mean. Like, do as I say, and be creative. Those, you know, that's kind of really shitty logic, but, you know, that's America. Um, so, now that I've given us a basic tip to work with, as you can see, it's hard to show you the other side. Oh, wait, no. What am I doing? Oh, yeah, see. So, now that I've given us this basic tip to work with, I'm going to grab a piece of paper and demonstrate how, to, how you might be able to draw. Okay, so... Let me get you closer to the paper so you can like really see better what I'm doing. So now as I said before, you know, like the calligraphy lines. That's really the primary benefit to this style of pencil when it comes to art. So simply put, you would just work if you've never used a calligraphy pen or whatever. You just, it's hard to 
demonstrate on this paper. Let me see though. Let me this over here. Did that help? Yeah, that'll definitely help. Okay, so wires get in the way. So there it is. That's like basically the fundamental principles of calligraphy. You just straight line followed by a wide line, followed by a straight line, followed by a wide line. Now one thing you're going to run into with this pencil style is it's not really going to be easy to draw perfect circles. They're always going to have that calligraphy-like style unless you awkwardly hold the pencil. There are other ways to carve the pencil to offset that, to kind of get a balance of the two. That's really something that you should experiment with on your own. I'm not going to make a super long tutorial video where I show you every possible way. I just kind of wanted to show you this. But yeah, so the calligraphy lineness. So now another benefit to the wide shape on the pencil um, is something that's kind of a pain in the ass with a regular pencil. So say you're drawing a circle and you want to shade outside of that. What do you do? Well, you hold the pencil at this awkward angle, like awkwardly long angle, and then you just work at it like that. You know what I mean? And now you have a wide shaded area. Or you could just go like that for a really dark shaded area. But it takes a really long time. That's impractical, it's inefficient, and it's just going to drive you insane unless you're already insane and enjoy tedious things. But with this pencil, it's much easier. So like I said, drawing circles is a pain in the ass with this. But there's no reason why you can't use both. So you draw a pencil, so if I say you're drawing a circle, drawing outside of that is now made exceptionally easy. Like you can draw like dark dark darkness but much 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 better like you're not it's a much smoother smoother darkness darkness must be really smooth and just like wider areas like like see how quickly I just did that like that would take forever with a regular pencil well not forever but you know what I mean so, like to shade that same size area It's like that's the same size, same, like slightly darker, yeah, but like, you know what I mean? Just blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's just one more tool in your arsenal. Like, you can't ever just have one thing to go. Like, all art is mixed media, mixed tools, mixed whatever, you know, it's all about mixing stuff. Um, so you keep one of these and you keep one of these, like right next to each other on the table. So you want to you want to do some curly shit, bam, you got the clear example. You want to do some fine, like some static lines, bam, you got that, bam, 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 whatever. Okay, I'm done with this because I'm getting fucking sick of it. Bye, thanks for watching. Subscribe or some some. some.